man. And it's, it's really apparent that you love sports and us, you know, seeing you, it's like a dream job. So, but honestly, how did you get into journalism in general? You know, Chris, I, I played sports as long as I could. I went to Henry Sibley high school in Mendota Heights. Mm -hmm. I played as long as I could, but by the time I got to my senior year, I just, I wasn't good enough anymore, unfortunately. (laughs) And so they had a mentorship class at Sibley and I ended up signing up for it with an idea of, of wanting to do something sports wise. Thankfully, the professor of that class had a student the year before who did a mentorship here at channel five with meteorologist Dave Dahl. Wow. So she had an in here at channel five. So she reached out to Dave, the wheels were put into motion with Joe Schmidt, who, you know, was the sports director way back in 1996. And he's now the sports director. Now he left for a little bit, a handful of years ago to to work in the corporate world, but ended up back here in TV. So she ended up long story short, setting up a meeting and and Joe was nice enough to take that meeting. And we sat down one evening and Joe said, yeah, like the kid, he can come in one or two nights a week. So Joe took me under his wing. And then at my mom's urging, she said, you always listen to KFAN radio, KFAN radio. Why don't you reach out to them and see if, if you can help them out in any capacity. And so I did. And it was a guy by the name of Eric Webster. You guys are too young to remember Webby, but Eric Webster was an on-air personality at KFAN 96, 97, 98, 1995. And in those years, and I ended up getting a meeting with Webby. And he took me under his wing. And so I ended up, I wasn't getting paid, but it was great experience. So For I ended sure. up helping out KFAN in the afternoons after school a couple days a week. Ended up helping out Channel 5 a couple nights a week. So at least got my foot in the door. Yeah, you know, because senior year in high school, I'm like a lot of kids. Like I had, I had like, I had a helping hour with the school nurse, you know, school service it was called or something yeah. like that. I had study hall. I had all this free time my senior year. Right. And so... You know, I was able to do things like that. And, you know, I was able to work a part-time job at a dry cleaner for for a couple nights a week to to earn a little bit of money, gas money. I had a a beat up two-tone Dodge Lancer uh, back (laughs) in the day, my first car, but it got me from point A to point B. You know, I was able to buy it for $1,000. It it, it held up. And so I was able to drive out to Bloomington. That's where KFAN was in the day here in St. Paul, where, where Channel 5 still is. And so... Senior year in high school, got my foot in the door with K-Fan, you know, Dan Barrero, Chad Hartman, Dan Cole, those guys. That's and, awesome. you know, Eric Webster and, and Sam Sigelman was was a fixture back in the day. He's now a big-time attorney. Uh, he's he's far too smart to have stayed in radio for, for two or three <laughs> decades. He's he's moved on to bigger and better. But Sam is still in town and, and still a great guy to this day who, who I keep in touch with. And, and all those guys at K-Fan, I'm still in touch with them. You know, but that's that's where it started. And then my college decision was made that much easier because once I had the the relationships at KFAN and at Channel 5, why the heck would I have gone to Madison for, for college? Or and I looked at, at the <laughs> University of Illinois at one point, but why go to Champaign, Illinois when I had my relationships here in town? So it made my yeah, decision exactly. easy. So I got accepted into the University of Minnesota, said, yeah, you know, like, let me stay here in town. The U of M is right down the street from Channel 5. And so I ended up maintaining my relationships with the fan and in channel five, channel five hired me part-time K fan hired me part-time. And I just, you know, kept, you know, hanging on next thing, you know, K fan says, Hey, you know, do you want to work with Chad Hartman on air? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, channel five was always behind the scenes until in 02 when I just decided I needed to live a life. Like I was missing out on a lot of college parties, just a lot of good right. times yeah. in college. So I made the decision to go the radio route, said bye to TV in 02. But then in 09, KFAN let me go. They let go 2,000 employees nationwide. Uh, Clear Channel was was the then owners of, of KFAN. So they let go January 20th. I'll never forget the date. January 20th, 2009, they let go 2,000 employees nationwide. I got caught up in that. Ended up working freelance for a bit. Joe Schmidt came back to Channel 5 December of 09. Him and I had always maintained that relationship, Chris. Mm-hmm. So he called me and said, hey, are you interested? They're handing me the keys to the sports department. Do you want to come work for me? Wow. You know, by the way, in the middle there, when I was on KFAN a lot, uh, Ted Canova was the then news director at Channel 9, Fox 9. And he had always listened to our radio show. For some goofy reason, he took a liking to me. <laughs> Ted called me one day and he said, hey, Doogie, 
you have any interest in filling in over here? We need a fill-in sports guy. You know, would you like to come over here, audition? Why don't you read the teleprompter, see if it's something you can do, if it's a fit, you know, if we want you to do it. But I have interest in you doing some some fill-in anchoring work here at Channel 9. Wow. Went over there, auditioned. It worked out well. So I ended up anchoring a, a handful of nights for, for Channel 9. And so I got on-air experience that way. You know, so when Joe Schmidt called me, he had seen me on Channel 9. We had kept in touch all this time. Heck, I leaned on him for, for advice. I mean, each and every time I told him, hey, I'm going to be on Channel 9 tonight. Like, can you watch? I need some feedback. Tell me sure. what the heck I'm doing wrong, because I know I'm not doing everything right. And so Joe and I had always maintained that sort of relationship. And so it was an easy call for Joe. Joe called me and said, hey, come work for me at Channel 5. Come back to Channel 5, and we'll figure out a role for you. Like, you're not going to be the number two sports guy, but – We'll find some on-air camera opportunities for you, but we want to use you in, in myriad ways. We'll use you behind the scenes. We'll use you on air, but just come work for me and we'll, we'll figure it out. And that was 10 years ago. And I've been here ever since. Definitely, man. That's, that's an awesome trip. And it's just the relationship you've created throughout all those years. is just honestly incredible. All those names. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, honest to God, Chris and Peyton, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, so much of this business, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate is who, you know, yeah. I mean, it's what, you know, don't get me wrong, but, but so often it's, it's who, you know, but then if you're given the opportunity, you have to run with it. Like, you take advantage I of think it, Joe sure. Buck, like I'll give you guys an example. I think Joe Buck is brilliant at what he does. Mm -hmm. I do. He takes a lot of heat in this town, yeah. but, <laughs> he but Joe Buck to me is, is, is the gold standard of, of play-by-play -play broadcasters. Yeah. Of course, Joe got his foot in the door because of his dad, Jack, right? Yes. But you still need to run with that, right? I mean, Chad Hartman, right? I mean, one of my dear friends. Yeah. Of course, Chad got a break back in the day because of his dad, Sid, the late Sid Hartman. Yeah. But Chad still had to run with it. You right. know, I mean, oftentimes it's it's tougher once you get that opportunity because of your last name. It's not easier, you know, but, but yeah, you do need to know, you know, some people. And, you know, the way this business is going at this point, you know, so many companies are – are cutting left and right. I mean, I'm real curious to see what, what the business looks like in, in a few years. Like I, I honest to God, I wonder on an almost daily basis, like what's local TV going to look like? Will the traditional five, six and 10 o'clock news still exist? Yeah. Or will it be just news on demand? Like there's always going to be a thirst for news, but like everybody gets their, their news now on, on their phones anyway. Right. Like, you know, do we need to do a traditional six o'clock news? I'm not exactly. positive we'll need to do that in, who knows, maybe as, as soon as two or three years, but like 10 years from now, I'm not oh. positive we'll need to do that, you know? So, you know, like I know there's always going to be a thirst for, for storytelling and reporting. I'm just curious to see in the next handful of years what exactly it looks like. For sure. 